Hey guys, today we're going to be talking to you about tomatoes, specifically the Mega Marley tomato. Now this is our own Ireland tomato that we've been growing here. Uh, this is third generation and uh, we're going to start processing some seed. Uh, we're very happy with these cherry tomatoes, so we'll show you guys what they look like in a second. Okay guys, so here is our Mega Marley cherry tomato. Um, these things are huge. Um, they'll give us somewhere around one and a half ounce roots. Uh, we've even weighed them at 1.7. These things are prolific as crap. I mean, they just produce and produce and produce. They've taken over. These things right here is like eight, nine foot tall. All right, everybody, let's get on to the seed saving part. So I want to let you guys know um, that we only pick the deepest, darkest red plump tomatoes for saving seed. Uh, some of these are like two ounces. Um, we let them stay on as long as we can without them rotting to get our right seeds. The camera might be a little bit wobbly. I'm going to be as easy as I can. So here we are. These are our Mega Marley tomatoes. Uh, this is our favorite cherry tomato. We've been growing this thing for a little while, trying to develop our own seed. Uh, these things are amazing. We love them. So uh, today we're going to show you guys how we save the seed from them. Now I have a little cut method I've been doing. All we have is a jar. Again, one of our favorite Cutco knives. And um, all I'm going to do is show you guys how I cut these things in a little special way. Get the tomato seed out really fast. We're going to find the indention on the tomato, which is the very end. We're going to cut right into that, just like so. We're going to roll it over and cut a perfect cross in it. Now the trick to this is you don't want to go no more than halfway when you're cutting the tomato. So right there is pretty much how it should look. Now the next step is to make sure you put your thumb on one point or flap of the tomato and your middle finger on the other part so all you have to do is turn your tomato over squeeze it bite one good time <clears throat> and i'm going to show you there's your seed now um there's nothing wrong with this tomato we're not squeezing this thing hard enough to get any juice out just the seed this is perfectly good still for we're going to use um we're going to be using them for tomato sauce because these things taste great i'll cut another one and show you so the first thing we do is find that blossom in. We cut right down into it, about a half inch. Cut down into it, about another half inch. And once we've made that crosshair there, we make sure we have a thumb on each flap. Squeeze, just one good squeeze. Almost kind of like uh, milking, sorta. Um, and as you can tell, this is pretty quick. We can get a lot of tomatoes done this way. All right, guys, I'm going to show you one more time. Find the blossom in. And all we're going to do is we're going to cut just maybe half inch down in there. And another half inch. Oh, this is ripe. I like them when they lay in. All right. Make sure your thumb and your ring finger is on the two opposite flaps there. And all you want to do is just use a milking motion all the way down to the end. Just like that, and uh, there you go. I mean, it's quick and easy. And by the way, guys, this does work for larger tomatoes. All right, guys, so the next thing we're going to do uh, once we have our uh, tomatoes, uh, what I call milked out the cedar here, we have our content, however much tomato juice that we have in the jar here. Let me raise up here. So, however much tomato juice we have in the jar. We add exactly that same amount of water. And after we do that, we let these things set for five to seven days. And uh, we'll know they're ready when we get that nasty, white, moldy cap on the top of the water. That lets us know the fermentation process is pretty much complete. And then all we're going to do is just uh, flush all that stuff out until it's crystal clear. Anyway, guys, um, we're going to show you what this looks like in five to seven days and through the magic of time. That's going to be just a second. All right, guys. So here's our Mega Marley tomato. Let me see if I can get in there and show you. I mean, you can tell it's uh, got this scum floating on top of it. We even got a few bugs in there. Um, so what we're going to do now that we know that this is pretty much fermentation complete, all we're going to do is uh, add a lot more water to this thing, give it a few minutes for the seed to settle back down at the bottom. All the bad stuff will float to the top. We'll drain it off and just complete the process until we have 
uh, crystal clear water and all the seed are floating at the bottom okay guys so what I do want to stress is I'm gonna take this jar and start pouring and as I pour I'm gonna raise it up just as high as I can I'm trying to get a really good um, hard stream you know get some force in there and get those seed moving around and get them mixed up really good and break all that stuff up and um, I'll go ahead and switch to the next frame so you can see the seed actually fall to the bottom all right guys so all I'm gonna do is just take the jar uh, pour off the excess water doesn't really matter how much you leave in there and just give more fresh water as you can see the seed is going to sink really quick um, and all the garbage is going to go straight back to the top and all we're going to do is just keep doing this over and over again until the water gets perfectly crystal clear and all we have is seed left at the bottom um, you're not ever really going to have a bunch of trash at the bottom I'm going to go ahead and complete the process and uh, show you guys exactly what it looks like all the way down to dry time so let me go ahead and empty out this jar and I'll just go ahead and let you guys follow right along and uh, see how it all works now I want to stress one more thing here guys the reason why we're doing this and letting the seed fall to the bottom is only the good seed are going to go to the bottom everything else that goes to the top even if you see seed there you want to pour it all off with the garbage that's sitting on the top and uh, make sure you don't pour your seed out of the bottom um, just leave enough water there so your seed, good seed can fall to the bottom and all your bad stuff goes to the top and just keep pouring your bad stuff off the top until you get clear water. Alright guys, there you have it. There's our seed. The water's pretty clear. We don't have but just a little bit of water left in there. So all we're going to do is dump these into a paper towel and allow them to dry. Hold on, we'll show you what that looks like. Alright, so here's our paper towel, shop towel, whatever you want to call it. We're just going to go ahead and dump our seed out on that. There you go. Now we don't let them sit in there very long. All we're trying to do is get the water off of it. And then we're going to take that paper towel, turn it upside down, and flick it over here on top of this parchment paper. Um, we dry them out on parchment paper. It keeps the seed from sticking to it. We can just rub them right off down into a, uh, like an envelope or um, something like that. Back into some paper. That's where we store our seed, guys. So all I'm going to do is take my paper towel right here with my seed over it. I'm just going to take it and turn it upside down. And uh, I'm going to flick this towel kind of straight. And there you go. Well, I missed one seed. Oops. Sorry. Okay, there we go. So now what we're going to do is just uh, straighten these things out, kind of flatten them a little bit. And uh, as they dry, we'll flatten them a little more. And as soon as we're done, you guys already know. That we're going to take these things and uh, put them in a the paper envelope. So again, these are our favorite. Um, we have quite a few saved already. We have pre-packaged about 200 of these. These are going as a donation to Garden State Gardener. So this is going to go to the seed of the month if um, he'll take them. Um, we're definitely going to ship those to him. All right, guys, that's it. We're just going to let these things dry for a few days. You'll know they're completely dry when you can break them or they pop. And crispy we're going to put them in a paper envelope that's pretty much it the process of fermenting tomato seed thank you for watching and we will see you on the next one